phlebotomy basic. Objectives Describe the major duty of phlebotomists, and discuss four other responsibilities that are important. Describe the proper hand washing technique, including the sequence of steps. Explain what to do in case of the following, a. Bleeding wound b. No sign of breathing c. Shock d. Latex sensitivity. Define personal protective equipment, PPE, and describe at least four types. Differentiate arteries, veins, and capillaries. Describe at least nine additives, including their mode of action and uses. State the correct order of draw for both evacuated tube collection and syringe collection. Topics Content Introduction Safety and Infection Control Personnel Protective Equipment Venipuncture Equipment Venipuncture Complication Specimen Transport Specimen Handling Chain of Infection Routine Venipuncture Order of Draw Target audience. Nurse. Phlebotomist. Practical nurse. Education format. Lecture and exam evaluation. Online module and self assessment. Introduction. Phlebotomist or phlebotomy technician is part of healthcare team designated in drawing blood, ensuring the proper blood extraction, amount and quality of the extracted blood prior to sending it to the laboratory for analysis. Phlebotomy is the practice of drawing blood. The word phlebotomy is derived from the Greek phobo, which means vein, and tommy, which means to make an incision. Today's phlebotomist is highly trained and uses a variety of skills in the workplace. Technical skills are required to collect specimens for analysis and developing these skills will constitute a large part of your training. A phlebotomist also needs to be highly organized and detail-oriented in order to deal with the large number of samples that may be collected in a short time, while ensuring that each sample is properly labeled and correctly handled. The successful phlebotomist is able to prioritize multiple tasks and match his or her pace to the volume of work. Blood vessels. The blood vessels are part of the circulatory system and function to transport blood throughout the body. The most important types, arteries, and veins carry blood away from or towards the heart, respectively. Arteries carry blood from the heart. Arteries are built to withstand the high blood pressure generated by ventricular contraction. They have a thick muscular wall which can expand when blood is pumped into them and then contract to maintain flow and pressure during diastole. Arteries are located deeper than veins, but they can be found by feeling for the pulse. Veins carry blood back toward the heart. Capillary blood enters venules, the smallest veins. Venules join to form larger veins. Veins have thinner walls and less muscle than arteries do because they do not experience large fluctuations in blood pressure. To help prevent backflow of blood, veins have valves within them at various points along their length that are pushed closed when blood flows back against them. Veins are closer to the surface than are arteries. Most blood tests are performed on venous blood because of the easier access and because venipuncture is safer than the arterial puncture. Patient identification. Correctly and unambiguously identifying the patient is the most important step in any phlebotomy procedure. When blood is drawn from the wrong patient, the test results for that blood will be attributed to the wrong person. This could have profound consequences. The patient may receive the incorrect diagnosis or the wrong treatment, resulting in injury or even death. Even if no harm comes to the patient, Drawing blood from the wrong patient may result in dismissal of the phlebotomist and the potential for a lawsuit. Never take any shortcut in identifying your patient. 
Guidelines issued in 2010 by the Joint Commission indicate that at least two patient identifiers must be used to correctly identify a patient before drawing blood. The two most important identifiers are the patient's name and date of birth. At a minimum, you will need to ask the patient to state his or her name and date of birth. Do not ask the patient, is your name Jane Doe? Patients who do not hear well, are cognitively impaired, or cannot understand English may nod or answer yes even without understanding the question. The patient must state his or her name without any prompting from you. In addition, you may be required to ask for other confirmatory information such as a picture ID. Identification accepted for verification are the following. 1. UAE Emirates Identification 2. Passport 3. Insurance Card Safety and Infection Control Workplace safety is regulated by OSHA. The regulations are designed both to inform workers about hazards in the workplace, for example, by requiring that workers know the health effects of the chemicals they use, and to protect workers from harm, for example, by requiring emergency shower nearby in case of chemical spills. Your employer is required by OSHA to maintain a safe workplace, provide a comprehensive safety training program, and report accidents that occur on the job. Types of safety hazards Biological Infectious agents including airborne or bloodborne organisms such as bacteria and viruses, sharps, needles, lancets, and broken glass, latex sensitivity, allergic, sharps hazards. Sharps, especially needles and lancets, are the most common hazards you will encounter as a phlebotomist. Sharps are dangerous both because of the physical injury they may cause and because they may carry blood-borne pathogens such as human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, hepatitis B virus, HBV, or hepatitis C virus, HCV. To prevent contact, always use the safety engineering features as specified for the device you are using. Safety engineering features for sharps include shielded or self-blunting needles for both vacuum tube systems and butterflies. Biohazard sharps container is colored yellow-red punctured resistant container. Made of a heavy-duty plastic. Able to close with a tight-fitting, puncture-resistant lid, without sharps being able to come out. Upright and stable during use, leak-resistant and properly labeled to warn of hazardous waste inside the container. Sharps container Assembly Must be labeled with name of staff assembled the container, signature, date. Disposal Must be labeled with their source prior to disposal and expiry date. Must be disposed of when three-fourths full or after three months from assembly date whether or not three-fourths full. Sharps hazards the Needle Stick Safety and Prevention Act of 2001 required all employers to switch to safety needle devices to minimize the risk of accidental sticks and solicited employee input in choosing safer devices. If you are stuck by a used needle or other sharp object that has been in contact with blood, or if you get blood in your eyes, nose, mouth, or broken skin, you should perform the following steps. 1. Immediately flood the exposed area with water and clean any wound with soap and water or skin disinfectant. 2. Report this immediately to your employer. Your employer is required to keep a log of such incidents. Follow your facility's exposure control plan for reporting and medical treatment for an accidental needle exposure. 3. Seek immediate medical attention, including counseling for exposure to HIV, HBV and HCV. Latex sensitivity. Latex sensitivity is an important problem in the healthcare field. Today, many healthcare facilities have stopped using latex gloves, replacing them with stretch nitrile or vinyl. The reaction to latex products can take a variety of forms. Irritant contact dermatitis occurs as a result of direct skin contact with materials left on the latex surface during manufacturing, such as processing chemicals. Redness, swelling, and itching may occur within minutes to hours of exposure. 
Removing the glove and washing the exposed area are enough to reduce the reaction within several hours. The skin may become highly sensitized with repeat exposure. Latex Sensitivity Allergic contact dermatitis is a true allergic response in which the body's immune system reacts to the proteins or other components of the latex that are absorbed through the skin. Perspiration increases absorption. Absorption may also occur through inhalation of glove powder. Symptoms may not be localized to the exposed area. Anaphylaxis is a rapid, severe immune reaction that can be life-threatening if not treated. During anaphylaxis, the airway may swell shut, the heart rate may increase, and the blood pressure drops. Epinephrine injection and emergency room management are needed for anaphylaxis. The Chain of Infection The Chain of Infection The traditional epidemiologic triad model holds that infectious diseases result from the interaction of agent, host, and environment. More specifically, transmission occurs when the agent leaves its reservoir or host through a portal of exit, is conveyed by some mode of transmission, enters through an appropriate portal of entry to infect a susceptible host. This sequence is sometimes called the chain of infection. The chain of infection The traditional epidemiologic triad model holds that infectious diseases result from the interaction of agent, host, and environment. More specifically, transmission occurs when the agent leaves its reservoir or host through a portal of exit, is conveyed by some mode of transmission, enters through an appropriate portal of entry to infect a susceptible host. This sequence is sometimes called the chain of infection. The chain of infection. Portal of exit. Portal of exit is the path by which a pathogen leaves its host. The portal of eggs usually corresponds to the site where the pathogen is localized. Example Influenza viruses and mycobacterium tuberculosis exit the respiratory tract, cystosomes through urine, cholera vibrios and feces, sarcops scabii and scabies skin lesions, and enterovirus 70, a cause of hemorrhagic conjunctivitis, and conjunctival secretions. Some blood-borne agents can exit by crossing the placenta from mother to fetus, rubella, syphilis, toxoplasmosis, while others exit through cuts or needles in the skin, hepatitis B, or blood-sucking arthropods, malaria, the chain of infection. Reservoir The reservoir of an infectious agent is the habitat in which the agent normally lives, grows, and multiplies. Reservoirs include humans, animals, and the environment. The reservoir may or may not be the source from which an agent is transferred to a host. For example, the reservoir of Clostridium botulinum is soil, but the source of most botulism infections is improperly canned food containing C. botulinum spores. The chain of infection. Portal of exit. Portal of modes of transmission by which a pathogen An infectious leaves agent its host. may be transmitted the from its natural of reservoir to a susceptible host to the site in where the ways. pathogen is localized. There are different classifications Example. for modes of transmission. Influenza viruses Here is one bacterium tuberculosis eggs the direct respiratory tract, direct contact, through urine, droplets, cholera vibrios and feces, direct sarcops scabies, and scabies skin lesions, and enterovirus seven. A cause of hemorrhagic conjunctivitis, in conjunctival chain secretions. Of infection. Some blood-borne agents entry. can exit by crossing the portal of entry from mother to the manner in which a pathogen enters a susceptible toxoplasmosis. The portal of entry must exit provide cuts or access to tissues in, in which the pathogen can multiply or a toxin arthropods. Often, malaria. infectious agents use the same portal to enter a new host that they used to exit the source host. For example, Influenza virus exits the respiratory tract of the source host and enters the respiratory tract of the new host. In contrast, many pathogens that cause gastroenteritis follow a so-called fecal-oral route because they exit the source host in feces, are carried on inadequately washed hands to a vehicle such as food, water, or utensil, and enter a new host through the mouth. Breaking the Chain of Infection the chain of infection is broken by disrupting the continuous chain from the source to host, thus preventing transmission of infectious microorganisms. 
Transmission is prevented by practicing appropriate hand hygiene, using PPE, and using the set of practices known as standard precautions. Breaking the chain of infection. Hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is the most important and effective means of preventing the spread of infection and antibiotic resistant microorganisms. Hand hygiene includes washing your hands with plain or antimicrobial soap and water and rubbing your hands with an alcohol based hand agent. Breaking the chain of infection. Personal protective equipment, PPE, consists of barriers and respirators used alone or in combination to protect skin, mucous membranes and clothing from contact with infectious agents. PPE includes fluid-resistant gowns, aprons, masks and respirators, face shields, goggles, shoe covers, and gloves. The types of PPE you use depend on the tasks or procedures being performed, the amount of fluids you are working with, and the potential for exposure to these fluids. Phlebotomy Equipment Portable Tray To carry all necessary equipment. Like a carpenter's toolbox, the tray is a compact, efficient way to store and transport the tools of the tray to a work site. Phlebotomy Equipment Drawing Station Includes a special phlebotomy chair with an adjustable armrest. The armrest locks to prevent the patient from falling out in the event of fainting. A bed may also be available for patients with a history of fainting. Supplies may be available at the drawing station, or you may need to bring your tray to it. Phlebotomy Equipment Tourniquet Is a simple strip of latex or non-latex material tied around the upper arm. Non-latex tourniquets are made from synthetic rubber or nitrile. Latex has the advantage of being inexpensive and therefore disposable due to increased latex sensitivity, may not be used in some facilities. Phlebotomy Equipment Sharp Container A used needle is considered biohazard waste and must be treated as such. Dispose of the needle with the adapter still attached immediately after activating the needle safety device. Needles must be placed in a clearly marked, puncture-resistant biohazard disposal container. Phlebotomy Equipment The Evacuated Tube System, A And a Multi-Zimple Needle, B You will use a multi-zimpling needle and an evacuated collection tube. To ensure a firm, stable connection between these two essential parts, a needle adapter, also called a tube holder, is used. A needle adapter is a translucent plastic cylinder. One end has a small opening that accepts the multi-zimpling needle. Evacuated Collection Tubes A color-coded, evacuated collection tubes are at the center of modern phlebotomy. Tubes hold blood for later testing in the laboratory, and each type of tube may contain different sets of additives, which are chemicals designed to promote or prevent certain changes in the blood sample. Which tube to use depends on what tests have been ordered. Phlebotomy Equipment The Evacuated Tube System, A and a multi-zimple needle, B. You will use a multi-zimpling needle and an evacuated collection tube. To ensure a firm, stable connection between these two essential parts, a needle adapter, also called a tube holder, is used. A needle adapter is a translucent plastic cylinder. One end has a small opening that accepts the multi-zimpling needle.
phlebotomy equipment. Centrifuge. A machine with a rapidly rotating container that applies centrifugal force to its contents, typically to separate fluids of different densities. Color-coded tops. Each combination of additives is distinguished by a different colored top. However, different manufacturers may use slightly different color coding schemes. In some situations, the requisition indicates the color of tube to use, in other cases, the name of the test is specified, and you need to determine the correct tube. Color coded tops. Color, yellow sterile. Test, blood culture. Additives. SPS to inhibit complement and phagocytosis. Specimen, whole blood. Inversion, 810. Color, light blue. Test, coagulation tests. Additives, sodium citrate. Specimen, plasma. Inversion, 34. Color, red. Test, chemistry, serology, blood bank. Additives, clot activators in plastic, none in glass. Specimen, serum. Inversion, 5. Color, gold red. Test, most chemistry tests. Additives, clot activators, polymer gel. Specimen, serum. Inversion, 5. Color, green. Test, stat and routine chemistry test, ammonia, electrolytes, arterial blood gases, ABGs, depending on heparin additive. Additives, arterial blood gases, ABGs, depending on heparin additive. Specimen, plasma. Inversion, 810. Color, lavender. Test, complete blood count, CBC, sedimentation rate, routine immunohematology testing. Additives, EDTA. Specimen, whole blood. Inversion, 810. Color, gray. Test, lactic acid measurement, glucose tolerance test, fasting blood sugar, FBS, blood alcohol. Levels. Additives, antiglycolytic agent, iodoacetate or sodium fluoride, that preserves glucose, perhaps the anticoagulant potassium oxalate or heparin. Specimen, plasma. Inversion, 810. The order of draw. Patients often need to have more than one test performed and therefore more than one tube filled. Because the same multisimple needle is used to fill all the tubes, material from an earlier tube could be transferred into a later tube if it contacts the needle. According to standard H3A6 good technique can reduce this risk somewhat, however, it cannot eliminate it entirely. For this reason. The CLSI has developed a set of standards dictating the order is the same for syringe samples as for direct filling from a multi-sampling needle. The order of draw standards have undergone several revisions within the past decade, and not all institutions have adopted the most recent set of standards, termed H3A6. 1. Yellow sterile. 2. Light blue. 3. Red. 4. Gold. 5. Green. 6. Lavender. 7. Gray. Requisition. All blood collection procedures begin with a request for a test from the treating physician. A physician's request for tests can be presented on a prescription pad or through a laboratory request form. Routine venipuncture. Greet and identify the patient. Introduce yourself and explain that you are there to collect a blood sample. If the patient asks the purpose of the test, it is usually best to simply say that the physician has ordered the test, without discussing specifics and instruct the patient to direct any questions to his or her physician. Routine venipuncture. Check the requisition or labels against this patient provided information and the patient's ID band. The ID band is usually on the patient's wrist or it may be on the ankle. If the patient is not required to be wearing an ID band, have the patient state his or her name and DOB, and compare this information with it on the requisition or labels. You may also ask the patient to present a photo ID like a driver's license or passport. Ask the patient if he or she is fasting or taking any medications. Position and prepare the patient. 
the patient should be positioned for both safety and comfort. Never draw blood from a patient who is sitting on a high stool or standing. Outpatients can be seated in a special chair with arm support. Routine Veni Puncture Assemble your equipment. Collect antiseptic pads, gauze, paper tape, bandages, tubes, and the needle disposal system. Be sure to double check the expiration dates on the tubes. Routine Veni Puncture Assemble your equipment. Collect antiseptic pads, gauze, paper tape, bandages, tubes, and the needle disposal system. Be sure to double check the expiration dates on the tubes. Routine Veni Puncture Perform hand hygiene either by using soap or alcohol disinfectant, and put on gloves. Routine Veni Puncture Apply the tourniquet. The patient's veins need to be assessed before the equipment can be chosen. Most veni punctures are in the arm. The tourniquet should be applied 3 to 4 inches above the puncture site. Direct skin contact may be uncomfortable for people with hairy arms. In this case, you can tie the tourniquet over a shirt sleeve. Do not place the tourniquet over an open sore. Remember, the tourniquet should not be left on longer than 1 minute. Routine Veni Puncture There are three consequences of improper tourniquet application. Hemoconcentration, an increase in the ratio of formed elements to plasma caused by leaving the tourniquet on too long or too tight. Hemoconcentration can alter some test results. Hemolysis, can occur if the tourniquet is too tight or left on too long. Destruction of red blood cells can alter test results. Petakai small red spots on the skin, caused by a tourniquet that is too tight. Routine Veni Puncture Select the site. The best veins for Veni Puncture are located in the antecubital fossa, on the anterior surface of the arm just distal to the elbow. Routine Veni Puncture Select the site. The median cubital vein is the first choice. It is located in the middle of the arm's surface is large and well anchored, and does not move when the needle is inserted. The cephalic vein, on the same side of the arm as the thumb, is the second choice. Access to the cephalic vein can be awkward due to its location on the outer edge of the arm. However, it is often the only vein that can be palpated, located by touch, in an obese patient. The basilic vein, on the same side of the arm as the pinky finger, is the third choice. It is the least firmly anchored, is close to the median nerve and brachial artery, and its location near the brachial nerve and artery means that if you insert the needle too deep, you may hit the nerve and or puncture the artery. Blood can also be drawn from wrist and hand veins, but these require winged. Infusion sets, butterflies, with smaller needles and tubes, making the draw slower and increasing the risk of hemolysis. Routine Veni Puncture Palpate the Vein Veins are best located by palpation, or feel, rather than by sight. Palpating is done with the tourniquet on. Gently push up and down with the index finger this determines the depth, width, and direction of the veins. Palpate with the index finger both parallel and perpendicular to the vein to feel the vein is width and depth. Veins feel spongy, bouncy, and firm. Arteries pulsate, and tendons feel rigid and do not spring back. Routine Veni Puncture Clean the site. Using 70% isopropyl alcohol or other antiseptics, clean the area in concentric circles spiraling. Allow the site to dry for 30 to 60 seconds. This provides maximum bacteriostatic action, avoids specimen hemolysis, and prevents stinging the patient. Do not blow on it. If you need to repalpate the vein, the area must be cleaned again before the puncture. Routine Veni Puncture Reapply the tourniquet If you removed the tourniquet during cleaning to prevent hemoconcentration or hemolysis, reapply it at this time. As you become more proficient in routine Veni Puncture, removing and reapplying the tourniquet will become unnecessary, because you will be able to locate the vein, scrub and dry the site. Inspect the needle, and insert the needle within 30 to 60 seconds.
Routine Venipuncture. Puncture Perform the Venipuncture. Puncture Anchor the vein by gently pulling the skin taut with the thumb of the non-dominant hand, 1 to 2 inches below the venipuncture puncture site and brace the arm using the thumb of your non-dominant hand, your left hand, if you are right-handed. Hold the needle assembly with your dominant hand, with the tube inserted up to the line on the adapter. Angle the needle 15 to 30 degrees above the skin. The best way to grasp the assembly is with your thumb on top, your index finger close to the front of the holder and your other fingers gently grasping the underside. Routine Venipuncture. Puncture Advance and change the tubes. Remove the tube when blood stops flowing into it. This may occur before it appears completely filled. Gently pull the tube to remove it. It helps to push against the flange on the end of the holder as you do so. Again ensure that the needle remains still. If the tube contains additives, Mix it by gently inverting it the number of times specified by the manufacturer as soon as it is removed. Insert another tube, if needed, being sure to keep the needle assembly still and angled downward. It helps to use your thumb to push on the end of the tube while pulling back against the flange, using your first finger, to keep the assembly still. Routine Venipuncture. Puncture Remove the tourniquet the tourniquet may be removed after blood begins flowing into the first tube. If blood flow is slow or collection of all tubes will be complete within one minute, the tourniquet may remain on the arm. The tourniquet must be removed before the needle is removed from the vein to prevent the formation of a hematoma, which is a reddened, swollen area where blood collects under the skin. A hematoma forms when the extra pressure from the tourniquet forces blood out through the puncture. To remove the tourniquet, Pull on the free short end to release it from the patient's arm. Routine Venipuncture. Puncture Withdraw the needle. Pull the needle assembly straight out from the patient's arm at the same angle it was inserted. Activate the safety feature on the needle. Apply a gauze square folded in quarters to the puncture site. Do not press down on the site until after withdrawal. The patient's arm should be straight or slightly bent but not bent back up over the puncture site, which can cause a hematoma. The arm may be elevated. Apply pressure. Pressure should be applied until bleeding stops. Routine Venipuncture. Puncture Dispose of the entire used needle collection system in the needle collection container. Use the disposal method and container design for the type of needle you are using. Routine Venipuncture. Puncture Label the tubes Label each tube at the patient's bedside, or in the drawing room in the presence of an outpatient. Do not leave the room without first labeling the tubes. Place one end of the label close to the tube cap end. If you are labeling by hand, use either a ballpoint pen or a permanent marker never a pencil or a non-permanent marker. The label must have the patient's name and ID number the date and time of collection, and your initials or ID number. If you are using computer-generated labels, make sure that the label has all the required information, and then add your initials or ID number and the date and time of collection. Never label a tube before collection. This can lead to serious errors if, for instance, another person makes the collection or tubes for different patients are mixed before collection. Routine Venipuncture. Puncture Attend to the patient. Check the puncture site to be sure bleeding has stopped. Dispose of all contaminated materials in a biohazard container. Place all specimens in either bags or tube holders, and then remove your gloves and wash your hands or disinfect. Thank the patient and smile. Routine Venipuncture. Puncture Deliver the specimen. Deliver the specimen to the laboratory. Follow the laboratory's policy about recording your work in the computer, logbook, or other tracking systems. Log in the specimen arrival time in the logbook. Complete all your paperwork. Problems associated with cleaning the site. Alcohol cannot be used for site cleaning when drawing a blood alcohol test. It is also not a strong enough antiseptic for drawing blood cultures, blood gases, or blood donations. In these cases, povidone iodine is used instead. For patients allergic to iodine, chlorhexidine gluconate is available.
when you use an alternative antiseptic, note it on the requisition. Povidoniodine is not recommended for dermal punctures, because it may elevate test results for bilirubin, uric acid, phosphorus, and potassium, burp. Complications during collection Changes in patient status in all of the following cases, be sure your patient is in a safe position before leaving the room. Syncope, pronounced syncope, is the medical term for fainting. Before syncope, the patient's skin often feels cold, damp, and clammy, beads of sweat may form on the forehead or upper lip, the patient may state that they are not feeling well, or will stop talking, their eyes may start to roll back, or their head could tilt either forward or backward. If syncope occurs during the procedure, remove the tourniquet and needle immediately and apply pressure to the site. Faint more common without patients, in patients lying in bed are less likely to faint. Complications during collection Changes in patient status in all of the following cases, be sure your patient is in a safe position before leaving the room. Syncope, pronounced syncope, is the medical term for fainting. Before syncope, the patient's skin often feels cold, damp, and clammy, beads of sweat may form on the forehead or upper lip, the patient may state that they are not feeling well, or will stop talking. Their eyes may start to roll back, or their head could tilt either forward or backward. If syncope occurs during the procedure, remove the tourniquet and needle immediately and apply pressure to the site. Faint more common without patients, and patients lying in bed are less likely to faint. Complications during collection Pain to prevent the startle reflex, warn the patient before the needle stick that there may be a little poke, pinch, or sting. Hematoma When blood oozes from the vein into the surrounding tissue, a hematoma is formed. You can see the skin surrounding the puncture swell up and fill with blood. If this occurs during the procedure, remove the tourniquet and needle immediately and apply pressure to the site. A cool cloth or cold pack can slow swelling from blood and ease the pain. The following are the most common causes of hematoma are, excessive probing to obtain blood failure to insert the needle far enough into the vein the needle going through the vein failure to remove the tourniquet before removing the needle inadequate pressure on the site after removal of the needle bending the elbow while applying pressure. Complications during collection Lack of blood flow Lack of blood flow can be caused by a defective tube, an improperly positioned needle, or missing the vein. Intermittent or slow blood flow indicates improper needle position or a collapsed vein. Defective evacuated tube Occasionally, blood will not flow into a tube because the vacuum in the tube has been depleted. This may occur from a manufacturing defect, use of an expired tube, or a very fine crack, which may occur if the tube is dropped. If a tube has been pushed past the tube advancement mark on the holder before insertion in the vein. The vacuum has been depleted. Always take extra tubes to the bedside or the outpatient area to be prepared for defects or errors. If you find a defective tube, be sure to note the expiration date and lot number. Complications during collection Improperly positioned needle If the tube is not the problem, the needle may not be properly positioned in a vein, and you may need to adjust it. When the needle is not in the correct position with respect to the vein, blood flow may stop or may be intermittent. Any one of the following may have occurred. The bevel is stuck to the vein wall. Slightly rotate the needle. The needle has passed through both sides of the vein, blowing the vein. Slowly pull back on the needle. The needle is not advanced far enough into the vein. Slowly advance the needle. The vein was missed completely. Pull the needle out slightly, palpate to relocate the vein, and redirect the needle. The tube is too large for the vein, causing the excessive vacuum to pull the vein onto the bevel and block blood flow. Remove the tube, wait a few seconds, and then switch to a smaller volume tube. Complications during collection Failure to collect on the first try The policy at most institutions is that a second try is acceptable. A new needle and tube must be used. For second tries, go below the previous site or use the other arm. 
After a second unsuccessful try, another phlebotomist should be found to draw blood from the patient. Long-term complications associated with venipuncture Nerve damage nerves in the antecubital area can be damaged if they are contacted with the needle during collection. The patient will experience a shooting pain or electric shock sensation down the arm, numbness, or tingling in the fingers. If the patient experiences this type of sensation, immediately remove the needle. The procedure should be performed at another site, preferably in the other arm. This incident should be documented according to your institution's protocol. To prevent nerve damage, avoid excessive or blind probing during venipuncture. Avoid using the basilic vein whenever possible. Long-term complications associated with venipuncture. Compartment syndrome for patients receiving excessive doses of anticoagulants such as warfarin, or who have a coagulation of disorder, such as hemophilia, routine venipuncture may cause bleeding into the tissue surrounding the puncture site. A small amount of blood leads to a hematoma. Larger amounts may cause compartment syndrome, a condition in which pressure within the tissue prevents blood from flowing freely in the blood vessels. This causes swelling and pain, and it carries the risk of permanent damage to nerves and other tissues. Severe pain, burning, and numbness may be followed by paralysis distal to the puncture site. The patient should seek immediate medical attention if compartment syndrome is suspected. Long-term complications associated with venipuncture. Compartment syndrome for patients receiving excessive doses of anticoagulants such as warfarin, or who have a coagulation of disorder, such as hemophilia, routine venipuncture may cause bleeding into the tissue surrounding the puncture site. A small amount of blood leads to a hematoma. Larger amounts may cause compartment syndrome a condition in which pressure within the tissue prevents blood from flowing freely in the blood vessels. This causes swelling and pain, and it carries the risk of permanent damage to nerves and other tissues. Severe pain, burning, and numbness may be followed by paralysis distal to the puncture site. The patient should seek immediate medical attention if compartment syndrome is suspected. Long-term complications associated with venipuncture Infection can be prevented by adhering to venipuncture protocol. Proper aseptic technique before and during collection must be followed. Do not touch the venipuncture site after it has been cleansed. Outpatients should be instructed to leave the bandage in place for at least 15 minutes. General Guidelines for Specimen Transport Proper handling of specimens after collection is critical to ensure the accuracy of the test results obtained from them. Analytes may change in composition and concentration over time and with temperature changes or exposure to light. The best drawing technique in the world is meaningless if the sample is not transported or processed according to established guidelines. Transport systems may be as simple as direct delivery to the laboratory or as complex as motorized carrier systems routed through a central distribution site. In the laboratory, the central processing department accessions the sample centrifuges it, and prepares aliquots for distribution to other departments. Rejection of specimens can be avoided with proper attention to collection technique, handling, and transport. General Guidelines for Specimen Transport 1. Tubes with additives should be inverted gently and completely as required inversion times, immediately after being drawn. Thorough mixing allows the additives to be evenly distributed throughout the sample. Gentle inversion minimizes hemolysis. General Guidelines for Specimen Transport 2. Centrifuge Centrifuge spins the sample at a very high speed, separating components based on density. Cellular elements, which are denser, move to the bottom, the less dense plasma or serum is pushed to the top. The most important principle of centrifuge operation is that every sample must be balanced by another of equal weight. Failure to balance the load causes the rotor of the centrifuge to spin out of a center. This can damage the centrifuge and may allow it to move during operation, possibly causing it to fall off the table or move across the floor. In addition to the direct danger, this poses to laboratory personnel, the resulting breakage of samples presents a biohazard.
3,500 rpm, revolution per minutes, in 15 minutes. General Guidelines for Specimen Transport 3. Do not mix together blood from different containers. Specimens must be correctly labeled. Barcode labels are becoming a standard in most hospitals. An efficient and safe way to transport samples is in a leak-resistant bag with zip closure specimen bags are marked with a biohazard symbol and have a separate pouch for requisitions to prevent contamination of the requisition should a specimen leak. Tubes upright. Place specimen in zipped lock container. Insert paperwork in rear pocket. General Guidelines for Specimen Transport 4. Fill the consignment form, prepare the sample, booked for pickup, wait for the result as per affiliated laboratory turnaround time. Test requiring chilled specimens. Adrenocortic atropic hormone. Ammonia. Arterial blood gases. Glucagon. Gastrin. Homocysteine. Lactic acid. Parathyroid hormone. Periuv. Chilled specimens and umph tests require that the specimen be chilled immediately after collection shown above. Chilling is used to prevent chemical changes that would alter test results. The sample should be placed in crushed ice or in an ice and water mixture and immediately delivered to the laboratory. The temperature should be 1 degree Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius and the sample should be transported to the laboratory for testing within 5 minutes of collection. A lactic acid sample should also be collected without a tourniquet, and without the patient making a fist since both of these can raise lactic acid. Blood constituents that are light sensitive. Beta-carotene. Bilirubin. Porphyrins. Vitamin A. Vitamin B. Light sensitive specimens exposure to light can break down or alter certain blood constituents shown above. Specimens to be tested for these constituents must be protected from light after collection. This is done by wrapping the tube in aluminum foil immediately after collection. An amber colored micro tube can be used for dermal collection, for example, of bilirubin samples. Time sensitive blood constituent Adrenocortic atropic hormone, ACTH. Ammonia. Brain natriuretic peptide. Lactate. Platelet aggregation. Prostatic acid phosphatases. Time sensitive specimens, some analytes unstable or volatile. Because of this, the tests must be performed rapidly after the sample is taken. Lists of analytes that are time sensitive.